This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, we'll let you know what's happening here at the Hazelton One Community Center. Welcome to the weekend. This is FYI Weekend, and I'm Ken Karam. We begin, as always, with headlines from FYI News 13 and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. It was the subject that triggered him to run for Congress in the first place, illegal immigration. And now Congressman Lou Barletta has successfully amended legislation that reauthorizes the Customs and Border Protection Agency to require a report on unaccompanied children at the U.S. Mexican border to include information on the impact on the CBP itself. Barletta made the change during a hearing of the House Committee on Homeland Security, of which he is a member. In large part, the administration's immigration policies are enticing alarming levels of unaccompanied alien children to enter the United States illegally, and this influx has completely overwhelmed federal resources, uh, turning U.S. Border Patrol offices uh, into daycare centers. Our agents should not be babysitters. They should be doing the job they are trained to do, protect our borders. Asking them to do otherwise is an operational flaw. Of unaccompanied children have been amassing at the border between the United States and Mexico, largely from Central American countries. A controversial topic has been plaguing Luzerne County Council for several months. The topic? is chickens. The debate began in February after a resident requested that the county allow residents to have chickens on their property. Council Chairman Rick Morelli is against allowing chickens and believes that the subject has monopolized too much time. This is one of the dumbest things that I've encountered in all my years of public office. Um, to some people it's a legitimate issue and we've confronted it, but there's no reason why uh, the county council should be spending over five months on it. Um, I've came out publicly and said that we need to stop it. Um, uh, my, my opinion is it's not a county issue. We should not handle it. It should be in the hands of the municipalities. Morelli wants council to focus more on the budget. He would like to see the matter go before council or county council for a vote so that the chicken issue can finally be put to rest. Just in time for this summer, the area has a new sweet place to stop by for frozen treats. Sweet Frog Frozen Yogurt held a ribbon-cutting ceremony on Friday at the Laurel Mall. The company started in 2009 with a store in Richmond, Virginia, and now they have almost 400 stores, including this one. They have over 60 different toppings to go with your favorite frozen yogurt. I asked the general manager which she usually orders. I myself, I, I like the Swedish fish. Yep, as far as the frozen yogurt, I like the sorbets. Um, we have 24 different flavors, including the twists, so, you know, there's a lot of variety. The general manager, Sharon Miller, adds that Sweet Frog likes to be a part of the community, and they do help by doing fundraisers. Recently, some students from the Penn State University, University Park campus, visited the Hazleton One Community Center. It was a learning experience for the students and the kids at the community center. Chris Goy has the story. After school learning takes off and soars as the Hazleton Integration Project is a big hit with the diversified youth in our area, Hazleton One Community Center hosted a two-week special course that helped children in the area with academic and linguistic support. Penn State education students from the University Park campus used Skype and also met face-to-face -face with children to help tutor and learn how to work with young English language learners. Educators wanted to find a way to engage students and create a fun atmosphere while still learning. Andrea Kolb, a Ph.D. candidate in the Education Department and instructor, says she believes there are two objectives in making this happen. One is to engage students in this idea of literacy as something that's fun, right, to inspire them to want to read and write and see that in a different way than what they might see in school, um, while also working one-on-one -on -one with a Penn State mentor um, that provides them, you know, individualized support in a fun and creative and mentoring sort of way. Um, and I think that's really important because Teachers and schools have a lot of students in a classroom, and so this kind of one-on-one -on -one attention, even for an hour a day, might not be realistic inside of schools, and so that's something that's really important for us here in this program. Um, and the second major objective is really this idea of positive identity affirmation. Um, so all of the students have been working for the past two weeks on projects that represent who they are, where they're from, what they care about, their dreams for their futures, and they've done this in multi-modalities. So some of them have created art projects, some wrote poems, um, and some are writing short stories about their lives and their experiences. Um, and so that's what we'll be presenting tonight. A lot of the Penn State students went into this knowing it will help their teaching ability, but got so much more out of it. 
Anna Ross, a junior psychology and political science major, gained a friendship. I initially um, joined the class because I thought that it would be interesting to learn, be familiar, familiarize myself with a different language, and um, working with Ivelis has completely changed my perception and everything that I'm learning about myself and about the course and about how her experience has been coming from the Dominican Republic. And it's originally it was supposed to be tutoring and tutoring uh, with a tutor 2D. And I realized that the relationship is so much more than that. We formed a friendship and I'm so fortunate and I hope that we continue to stay in touch and this isn't goodbye, it's just to see you later. Students have had the privilege not only to learn, but to gain experiences about each other's lives according to Sacha Garcia. Senior Penn State student Marina Burka translates from Spanish to English for Ms. Garcia. Hemos aprendido muchas cosas como we've learned so many things these past two weeks. We've learned how to share. Um, we've been together the whole time and just learned so much about each other's lives and it's been great. This is one of the many educational programs at the Hazleton One Community Center. If you have any questions, call 570-861-8081. With FYI News, this is Chris Goy. Thanks a lot, Chris. And now from the desk of the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue, the deadline for older adults and residents with disabilities to apply for PA's property tax and rent rebate program has been extended from June 30th to December 1st. As of May 30th, the Revenue Department has received almost 464,000 rebate applications. As specified by law, distribution will begin July 1st. For forms and more information, log on to revenue.state.pa.us or call toll-free at 188-222-9190. Coming up next on FYI, Lisa Sugar goes for a motorcycle ride. Get ready for that. And in sports, we'll tell you how poker and racing mix to help the Armed Forces Foundation. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. When you hear the name Mark Frumpkin, it is usually synonymous with fine jewelry. But today, Mark Frumpkin is synonymous with motorcycles and the biker. <laughs> well, how about that, Lisa? Thanks for coming out today. Yeah, this is fun. This is my hobby, you know? <laughs> I'm a motorcycle nut, you know? Uh, years ago, uh, a friend of mine said to me, you know, the guy like you that all the, you have working and everything else, that you're probably crazy to be riding a bike, and hence the plate. But... <laughs> Uh, I've been riding since I was probably about 16 years old. We used to rent bikes up on Alter Street at a little place up there for like seven bucks an hour. Uh, plus it was a buck extra for a helmet, which I always, always bought that extra buck for the helmet, and I still do. Uh, but I've ridden really all over the place through the years. You know, I've been up and down the Blue Ridge Parkway about 15 times with a bunch of FAA examiners and pilot friends. Uh, doctors, lawyers, there's all kinds of people that ride motorcycles today that you wouldn't expect or suspect that that's what they do, but they do. And they're, you know, I'm not alone. I'm not alone out here with this motorcycle thing. It's just an awful lot of fun. Well, it's been an awful lot of fun for a long time because you have racked up a lot of miles on the motorcycle. And recently, BMW has recognized you for the amount of miles that you've been riding in only BMW motorcycles. Well, that's just on BMWs. That's right. And I bought all these bikes from Hermes down in Port Clinton. I'll give them a little plug because they're great. Their service is great. They've always been good to me. But um, the BMWs are easy to take a lot of miles on. You know, I've had Harleys and Yamahas and Suzukis and every brand... I uh, had a Guzzi. I still have a Guzzi. I have a Guzzi from back in the 60s back there. But um, the BMW to me is the ultimate machine. I can get on that bike and drive it to Pittsburgh. And as I was saying to you earlier, there's enough gas in it. I don't even have to stop for gas. I have to stop for other things. But I don't have to stop for gas all the way to Pittsburgh. So um, they're just a great machine, and I love them. And I just have no problem just getting on it and just whew, gone. Now, how did you find out that you won this award? Well, how Take us through that. Okay, well, Chris Baver, uh, the owner, Harley... Harley, yeah, sorry. Hermie Baber's wife called me up and said, Mark, you know, BMW has given awards out for 100, 200, 300, 500,000 miles. Uh, would you like me to look up your awards? Because you've had probably 50 bikes that you bought from us, and I could go through the serial numbers and get the mileage. I said, Chrissy, I said, if you've got nothing else to do, be my guest. You know what I mean? I have no problem with that. That'll be fun. And she looked it up for the time that they had computers and brought up all of the serial numbers of the bikes and the mileage when I traded them in. She said, Mark, you're up for a 300,000 miles of war. I said, crazy. You know, we could do that. 
we could do that. That's fine. And here I am. They called me last week, and I went down, and uh, Herm, who I bought my first BMW from in 1979, was there to greet me, and he actually handed me the award, and his son, Herm, was on board as well, because he's the guy I've been buying bikes from for the last probably 20 years, 15, 20 years, and young Herm, the third, they're not really the first, the second, junior, senior, nothing like that, but uh, young Herm was there too, looking on, so there's a nice picture of me on Facebook, for all my Facebook friends, of the three of us, and it's a great shot, it was, it was a lot of fun, and a great day, and you know, I think, it's, I think it was very nice. I think it was a very nice award. I think it was very nice of them to do that for me. Well, I think it's rather unique for people to get another side of you. They're used to <laughs> yeah. seeing you in the suit and tie behind the glass cases with the beautiful diamonds and jewelry. Right. So now they see a different side of you, and you have another major accomplishment by getting this. Uh, so we wish you many more happy miles of riding, and we're going to let Lisa. you uh, in a moment here get off and ride off into the sunshine instead into the of the sunshine sunset. Today. Lisa, thanks for coming out today, and I appreciate this, and it's very kind of you. Thank you. All righty. Go for a ride. Okay, we'll fire this thing up. Thanks, Lisa. Now, if you notice, Lisa kept telling Mark to go, keep going. Never once said, I'm coming with you, but yet she ended up on the bike somehow. Well, here's what's happening on FYI's weekend community calendar. The 10th annual drug-free block party will take place on July 12th in Wilkes-Barre's Public Square. The event, sponsored by the United We Stand, Divided We Fall organization, will feature a live DJ, dancing, food, contests, a dunk tank, and more. All proceeds will benefit the organization that helps guide youth to a positive path in life. The event is free. However, volunteers and donations are welcome. For more information, you can contact Darlene at 332-3550 or you can email her at the email up on your screen. We are in your community and we're teaching you about water safety this summer. We are at the YMCA and we're back with Eileen, the aquatic director, and today we're talking about going to beaches and water parks. Okay, last week we told you about the safety of uh, backyard poles and what to look for and today like I said we're going to talk about going to the beach you might be going away you might be going to a local beach with some safety tips that we can take with us well for the uh, parent that doesn't have a backyard pool mm -hmm. um, the other places that you might be going to to get into the water would be a lake or a beach or uh, a water park or your public pool so anytime you go to these places you want to make sure that um, you know that there's a lifeguard on duty, all right? Uh, if there is not a lifeguard, I know some of the state parks um, do not offer that service. Make sure you have an adult watching the children. Mm -hmm. If it's not yourself, um, maybe another parent that's come along with you, so, but someone should be watching them at all times. At the beach, um, you're going to make sure that you uh, check with the lifeguards. There's flag warnings up on the beach areas, uh, red, green, and then also amber. Mm -hmm. So check with the lifeguard to see what the conditions are for that day. One thing that you have to be aware of at the beach is riptides or strong currents. You want to teach your children to, instead of swimming in towards shore, swim parallel to the shore and get out of the rip current, or otherwise they'll be drug out into the, into the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that you have to watch out for is marine life. Um, jellyfish, Portuguese man of war, and if they do get bitten by any marine life, to notify the lifeguard as soon as possible. Uh, at water parks, uh, they're a lot of fun too. They uh, have a variety of different rides that you can ride. Make mm -hmm. sure your children are going on the rides that are appropriate for them. There's some age restrictions and also some height restrictions and they're there for a reason. Um, Non-swimmers at the water parks, they do have uh, Coast Guard approved life jackets available so make sure your children do wear them. And just make sure that um, if you want to set a time when you want to meet your children, because a water park is, is vast and it's kind of hard to keep your eyes on them if they're a little bit older, um, just you know, set up a meeting time where and when. And also when you're outside, you're going to have to apply that sunscreen. Um, right. Even though you are in the water and it's hot out, you have to take 
breaks to apply that sunscreen and you have to drink plenty of liquids, right? Yes. Yes. All right, next week we'll go more in depth on water safety when you're in the water to avoid a drowning situation. Join us every Thursday right here on FYI. It's time for Movie Minute right here on News 13, your weekly look at what's playing at Regal Cinema 10 just outside the Laurel Mall. Two new releases this weekend including How to Train Your Dragon 2, five years have passed since Hiccup and Toothless united the dragons and Vikings of Burke. Now they spend their time charting the island's unmapped territories and then find themselves at the center of a battle to protect Burke from a power-hungry warrior named Drago. And also 22 Jump Street, rated R. After making their way through high school twice, big changes are in store for officers Schmidt and Janko when they go deep undercover at a local college. Still playing X-Men Days of Future Past, Godzilla, The Fault of Our Stars, Neighbors, The Edge of Tomorrow, and A Million Ways to Die in the West. For all the showtimes, call Regal Cinema 10, 570-450-7454, or to speak to a movie attendant, call 570-450-7340. This is FYI News 13 Sports. How would you like the chance to compete against NASCAR's best and raise some money for a great cause? No, you won't be racing them in a car or on foot. In fact, in fact, this competition isn't a race at all. You can take your time and use your mind to try and beat out some of your favorite drivers at the third annual Pocono Celebrity Poker Showdown on Thursday, July 31st at the Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. I'll give you the sign-up information, but first, here's more on what you'll be playing for. In a sport with a lot of flags, red ones, yellow ones, green ones, and checkered ones, just to name a few, this one is seen the most. Stock car racing is about as American as it gets, so it's fitting that the NASCAR Foundation is teaming up with the Armed Forces Foundation to support Operation Caring Classroom. The program educates children about Veterans Day and encourages them to support their peers who have parents serving in the military. We really want to help build a volunteer core base because you know, our families suffer too when it comes to post-traumatic stress syndrome. It is not just the service members who suffer. So we're really excited to partner with the NASCAR Foundation to blow our big program that we have nationwide to make it even bigger and make, we have a lot of fun prizes for the kids to get involved in, but the big part of it is to help the kids heal, but also to help create a sense of volunteerism with young children so that they understand when they get older that they need to continue to volunteer and help their, their fellow neighbors. The cool part about donating to this event is that you get the chance to go after some of your favorite NASCAR personalities for a bounty chip that is worth $100. Here are some tips from Kurt Busch, who has the responsibility of recruiting NASCAR talent for this event. Biffle, he, he likes to flash around um, his experience, so to speak, but uh, he's vulnerable in certain areas. Uh, you know, I can see the certain cards he likes to play, and there's the... Um, the group, the, the young kids that come in um, that you don't know if they're good at it or not, but then the next thing you know, their, their chip count starts stacking up. So those, those young guys you always got to watch out for because they can count cards quicker than us old guys. Ha, huh. so NASCAR drivers don't do everything at 200 miles per hour. And while they may not be the best poker players, they are generous. It's a matter of if I can't get the, the drivers or crew members or the officials to, to play, they can still donate, and yep. that seat that they donate, we will give to a vet, yep. and that's up to us. We will have a lot of veterans to go and recruit playing. those guys to bring them there yep. and have have fun. That's that's what it's about. So if uh, like if Biffle he can't make it this time around, I know we'll get 250 bucks out of him, and that way his seat can be played we'll get by a, a veteran. Dollars yeah. Out of him. yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll bump his up. We'll throw the extra zero on Biffle. Yeah. The Pocono Celebrity Poker Showdown lets you sit across from your NASCAR heroes, and it also lets you sit down with the heroes who make sure you can enjoy that sport and many other freedoms. We do have a lot of veterans that do come. We try and bring a lot of guys with PTSD. I don't want to announce it that evening, but we do. Um, it's part of our therapy like we have with NASCAR. We bring them here to the track. It's important for them to experience everyday life experiences and to feel special. So to sit there and, and talk to people instead of being shut in at home is really important to us. So you will have some veterans sitting at your table. They might not announce themselves, but I promise you they will be there. Yeah, instead of troops to the track, it's troops to the table. <laughs> <laughs> 
Those still photos from this year's Pocono 400 were taken by our very own Lisa Sugard, who I thank about 45 times during the newscast, so I'm not going to do it again, but she does deserve credit. Now, if you would like to register for the third annual po Pocono Celebrity Poker Showdown, stop by nascar.com slash foundation. For $250, you get a seat at a table, plus a VIP meet and greet with drivers and celebrities. For $150, you can get the VIP meet and greet, and you can be a spectator at the Poker Showdown. $100 gets you into the showdown and for 50 bucks you can watch the poker showdown as a spectator. Also if by chance you win the event you can either you can pick between a VIP experience at the Pocono Raceway or a VIP stay at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. Well I hope you enjoyed sports on FYI weekend we are going to take a short break we'll be right back. It's the weekend and I love sitting at a high top ordering some delicious apps and having a few beverages with my friends at Bottlenecks where they have an awesome atmosphere with awesome food. Hello again and welcome back to the Hazleton Animal Shelter. I'm here with Bob and Marley, two of our newest kittens, um, just moved up from the back. Little, they're both domestic short hairs and they are up to date on all of their shots, including their rabies and distemper. Both cats have been tested for feline leukemia and FIV, and of course they've both come up negative. Bob and Marley are both brothers, and they're approximately three to three and a half months old. They are both neutered and uh, do very well with other animals. They're very friendly with each other, so we think they do great in a household that already has cats or dogs. Being young uh, and, and inquisitive as kittens are, they are in their climbing phase, but uh, they're not very destructive. They're very affectionate and playful. Bob and Marley are both domestic short hairs, so they won't need a whole lot of uh, brushing. And as you can see, they're both very holdable and lovable. They get along great with each other, so they would probably do excellent in a home with other animals. These cats are, I think, equal parts playful and affectionate. Probably the I ideal kitten for anybody who would like to welcome a new young little cat into their home. So Bob and Marley are our two kittens for this week. Now let's go have a look at our dog. And here I am with Candy. Candy is a Rottweiler Boxer mix who's approximately uh, 10 months to a year old. She's very young and very much puppyish. She very much has a Rottweiler look and a good combination of Rotty personality and Boxer as well. Although she doesn't look Boxer at all, she does have a long tail and a lot of energy. Candy was surrendered due to the health of her owner. So there are no behavioral problems with Candy, including house training issues. Candy is up to date on her rabies shot and we have her scheduled to be spayed very shortly. We're looking for somebody who has experience with either Rottweilers, Boxers, or both breeds. And definitely somebody who has a large yard and a lot of time and room for her to run. Candy seems to be very friendly with everybody she sees. We have not uh, tried her out with any other animals yet. But of course, as is our policy, we always like to have potential adopters bring down their own dogs to do a meet and greet if they'd like to adopt one of ours. So if you're interested in our two kittens we featured before or this week's dog Candy here, come on down to 101 North Poplar Street at the Hazleton Animal Shelter. That's it for FYI Weekend for breaking news. Go to facebook.com slash FYI News 13. If you want to catch up on any FYI shows, you can go to sspTV.com. We'll see you on Monday. Take it easy, everyone.